Let me start by saying I apologize for the kind of moody lighting in this video. We're working with what we have today, but it's kind of nice. It's a it's a little bit vibey. It's a little bit of a mood, so we're just gonna go with it. Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kayla, and I like to talk about books, reading, reading vlogs, all that kind of stuff. So if any of that if any of that interests you, then please subscribe. And today I want to talk about my favorite books of 2022. Getting depressed and all that it happens to me every year. So a lot of these books, some of these books were released in 2022, but some of them were just books that I read this past year. So if it feels kind of confusing, that's why not all of these were like new releases in 2022. I just read them in 2022. So they were like my favorite books that I read that year. Some of them were new releases, but anyway, I'll just get into my list and talk about it. The first book, I'm going to go kind of chronologically with my favorites throughout the year. Um, my first First favorite book that I read this year was A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms by George R. R. Martin and oh my gosh I have a dedicated review on this I'll link it somewhere around here but honestly this book blew me away I remember when I read just the original series and found out that he was releasing more of the Duncan Egg stuff before he was going to be releasing Winds of Winter I was so 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 frustrated and mad and then I actually read Duncan Egg and now I'm kind of like, I would not be that mad if he released more of these before Winds of Winter because they were such enjoyable little stories. I really, really like the vibe. I really like Sir Duncan. And it didn't even occur to me when I was reading it, but somebody actually like left a comment saying that they thought that maybe Sir Duncan had made up that he was knighted. And that was just, I just love, I love the whole dynamic. I love his dynamic with Egg. I love everything about the little stories that we got so far. And so I'm actually really looking forward to more of these but I just have to start with that because it was surprising to me I definitely did not think that I would like these as much as I did that's all I've got to say I just didn't think that I would like these as much as I did but I love them and if you want to know more of my thoughts I will leave a link to that review somewhere around here but the next book that I absolutely loved in 2022 was This Time Tomorrow by Emma Straub 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 I think it's Straub I don't know I think I've only read one other book book by her but I really enjoyed this book. It's kind of one of those books that I feel like was good, but it was extra inviting for me and extra cathartic for me because it came to me at the right time. So sometimes it's like a book might be good or not good or whatever, but it depends on the timing and what's going on with you and your life and your emotional state when you read it. And so for me, this book really hit something in me emotionally when I read it. Um, I read it when we were on vacation in Seattle actually. It was really nice, really relaxing read, but it was actually after I had gotten news of my dad being sick and my dad had been sick and I, you know, ended up going back and forth to visit a lot because he lives back home where I'm from and uh, a lot of that being inspired by this book because I just didn't want to think. I just feel like it's one of those good reminders to spend the little moments and the little time with the people that you love while you have it and to kind of savor those and I didn't really know. I, it just really spoke to me. It came to me at the right time. To kind of elaborate, the main character in this book, her dad is sick when sh and she discovers like kind of a time travel piece where she can go back in time and spend more time with her dad before he passes and it's just really or before he's sick and like unresponsive and it just yeah it was definitely relatable for me it was definitely one of those books that was a really nice read but it also like I said came to me at the right time I don't remember if I did a d dedicated review to this but if I did I'll link it anyway it was a really great book I highly recommend it and enjoyed it but it's definitely a unique taste because it was like sci-fi I don't know it was just very interesting alternate timelines alternate time travel kind of stuff so if you're not into that then you might not like it but it also wasn't too 
too sci-fi or anything like that. It wasn't too time time travel-y. Um, what I kind of like was that the time travel actually wasn't really explained that much. It was just more of like a plot device kind of to move the story along. So it was very like story character driven. In this particular instance, it didn't need to be explained in my opinion. Like I think that would have ruined it a little bit, but sometimes I do like the explanations. But in this case, yeah, I really just enjoyed the book start to finish. The next book that I really loved in 2022 was Normal People by Sally Rooney. And I had not read anything by Sally Rooney before this. I'd somehow escaped the normal people, all of the hype around this book, and I'd escaped. I hadn't, I haven't seen the series. I haven't, I hadn't consumed anything about it. So I actually went into this one really, really fresh. And I also read, oh, what was the other one she wrote? Beautiful World, something Beautiful World. I also read that and I just wasn't quite as fond of it, but Normal People was incredible. First off, I feel like a lot of people kind of tack it with the tag of like a millennial love story, absolutely. But what I think it really is more than anything is a realistic love story. Like a lot of uh, the people we love the most, those are the most complicated, messiest relationships. And this book just really showed that. It was just beautiful, beautiful prose, beautifully written. The characters were just incredible. Marianne and Connell. I mean, I just, and I might have to watch the show now, but I'm also a little bit worried that I just, it won't be worth my time. So I don't know, but I highly recommend this book. I am like not a romance reader at all. And I almost even cringe to call it romance because it definitely doesn't belong in just the romance category. It is like this really just beautiful character driven fiction. And I feel like their relationship is what you explore their individual stories through as well. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with Sally Rooney. This was such a good book. I don't think I did a dedicated review to this, but I probably should or should have. It was just one of my favorite books of the year. It actually like really, really hit me emotionally. I have been like emotionally very vulnerable this year. It's been probably the hardest year of my life to be totally honest with you. So I'm a little bit happy that it's coming to a close and there's like a fresh start on the horizon but yeah this book just really it hit it hit different yeah i think this is just like a must read book this is gonna go down as probably one of my favorite books of years and years to come i think it's i think it's a modern classic to be totally honest in my opinion at least it's a modern classic Speaking of modern classics, the next book on this list is Anxious People by Frederick Beckman. I'm already a fan of Beckman. I really just love to read everything that he releases, but somehow hadn't gotten around to reading Anxious People yet. I was at a bookstore when I was visiting my dad back home and I found this book. Like I said, I'd been wanting to read it for a while and didn't, I'd run out of reading material. So I picked it up and wow, was I floored. I think this is going to go down. I mean, I know A Man Called Ove is really good as well, honestly, but I feel like this might go down as his most like dynamic book because I think that it did such a good job of not being one note. It was so emotional, so character driven, but also had this really intriguing story and plot line. But the plot line, like I said, relied on the characters, very character driven, and the characters were interesting, well written. Somehow you got to explore multiple characters without any of them seeming like fake. They all felt very real. It was just an incredibly written book. He did a lot of his signature kind of foreshadowing where he'll kind of give you hints at things to happen and play on your expectations and this book just did that so so beautifully but what it had that not all of his books capitalize on quite as much was the humor component it was unbelievably funny as well as heartfelt sad action-packed I mean just like a really really good book it had like a little bit of everything I feel like for me I don't know that it's my favorite book by him but I think it it might be like technically from a technical standpoint his best book it was just phenomenal so so well written and I absolutely adored it but anyway it was one of my favorite books of the year everything Beckman writes 
is like on my like list of top books basically. <laughs> the next book that I really really loved that I read last this last year was The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon by Stephen King and this was kind of on my specific like Stephen King books I really wanted to read by him list. I finally got around to reading it because I found it on sale but I've been wanting to for a really long time and it was just like the perfect I waited till like Halloween season. It was the perfect spooky season read. I think it's legitimately one of his best works or at the very least one of his most underrated. I just don't hear a lot of people talking about this book quite enough, quite as much as they should be. The way that he could just write the simple horror of like a little girl being lost in the woods, I don't think it needed another element, but adding another element of her feeling like she was possibly hunted, we wonder whether or not it was real, whether it was an animal, whether it was something else. I did really like, I really liked everything about it. There were a couple complaints I had, but overall, I it was absolutely one of my most enjoyable reads of the year. It was perfect for like spooky time rating, so I highly, highly would recommend that to anybody who hasn't read it and wants to read something by Stephen King that's like not crazy supernatural, just really great horror. Like just, this is a book where you can tell that not only is he somebody who has talent, but he's also somebody who practices, like who has honed that craft. He doesn't just sit and rely on his talent, he absolutely works hard to make sure that it is like tip top and this book shows it. The next book on this list is The Winners by Frederick Beckman. Another Beckman, like I said, I love the things he writes. This was in the release this year. It was the third book in the Beartown trilogy, which he always kind of, I guess, planned to be a trilogy, but the books all by themselves kind of stand alone, if that makes sense. So like you could read each of the books by itself and it would make sense and it would kind of feel complete as its own story, but they are like a trilogy and he did apparently always intend that. Um, but anyway, so part of the reason is because they didn't know how well it would perform. The other reason is that apparently he hates when authors leave like really, really, really annoying cliffhangers in like series or trilogies or books. So he just didn't want to do that to his readers, which honestly, I very much appreciate. And I actually think it made it better to read them that way because it, each one does feel like a self-contained story and you have like a little bit of closure at the end but there could be more so I absolutely enjoyed this after the last one I didn't really know if there would be that much more story to tell but why was I wrong this really tied things up and we got more of the head perspective which was uh, honestly really refreshing it was refreshing to have bear town no longer be like the down on its luck town and be kind of doing a little bit better and see that role reversal with the towns. Um, I did a dedicated review on this and I will include that somewhere around here because I had a lot more to say on that but I'll just say definitely one of my favorites of the year. One of the best books I feel like that was probably released this year just incredible. Okay, the last book on this list is my most recent that I will try and link the review to somewhere around here. It is Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin. It has a dedicated review, so I'm not going to go into too much depth or detail on it, but after I started House of the Dragon, I really, it became clear that I really needed to read Fire and Blood. I wanted to, but I was worried that it would be a little bit dry. That's in retrospect, a very silly worry because it is not dry at all, but you never know with like kind of the fictional history kind of, but no, this is really, really great, really interesting. I mean, maybe if somebody else wrote it, it would be dry, but because George R. R. Martin has such nice description within his fantasy and it just, it's, it's a good book. I don't know what to say. If you've watched House of the Dragon but you haven't read Fire and Blood, I'd really recommend it. I think it's good. Yeah, I don't know what more to say. I will link that review as well. Sorry, there's like a ton of like full reviews to link, but if you want to know in-depth thoughts, this isn't quite the video for that. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. I am so ready to close the book, close the chapter on 2022 and have a fresh new year in 2023. But those were all of my favorite books that I read this year. 
it was actually a really really good year of reading for me there were a lot of books that felt like just amazingly great reads there were also quite a few duds to be honest but I don't want to be negative and talk about those these were the best books that I read this year and let me know below if you've read any of them what your thoughts were all of that and thank you so much for watching like subscribe and I will see you later I won't see you later I will probably see you in 2023 which is crazy. Getting impressed and all that it happens to me every year. Thank you.